short brief information about stroke. Um, we've heard of it, but you know, we need to be aware of some of the signs and symptoms. Um, for a stroke, it occurs when blood supply to part of your brain is interrupted or severely reduced, therefore depriving your brain tissue of oxygen and nutrients. In a few minutes, and I mean few minutes, brain cells begin to die. About 80% of strokes are caused by too little blood flow, um, and the remaining 20% are caused by bleeding into the brain tissue and into the, the surrounding tissue of the skull, also known as hemorrhagic stroke. Um, stroke is a medical emergency, and prompt treatment of stroke is very crucial. Therefore, early treatment can minimize your damage to your brain and potential stroke complications. Now, if you haven't been listening to me so far, I need your ears right now. Um, I'll be talking to you about the signs and symptoms of stroke. There are only five. Uh, so if you're feeling it or you know someone who's feeling it, please, please, please take caution. Uh, number one is all of a sudden, and the key point is suddenly this happened, you have trouble walking. If you're having a stroke, you may stumble or, or suddenly feel dizzy, you lose your balance, or you have no coordination. Um, number two is you have trouble speaking. If you're having a stroke, your speech may become slurred. Um, you may have a hard time coming up with words to help you explain what's going on around you. You know, for a moment, take a minute and try to repeat a, a simple sentence. I don't know, the Lord's Prayer or something. And if you cannot, you know, repeat that short sentence accurately, you may be having a stroke. Number three is paralysis or numbness on one side of the body. You know, when you're having a stroke, you suddenly, again, have this numbness, weakness, and paralysis on one side of the body. Try to raise your arm over your head at the same time, both arms. And if one arm lags behind, then you may be having a stroke. Um, number four is trouble seeing. If you're having a stroke, you may suddenly have blurry vision, you start seeing double, or you just have blackened vision. And the last but not the least is a headache. Again, sudden headache, just out of the blues. And it's un for you, it's unusual headache. And this headache may be accompanied by a stiff neck, facial pain, pain between your eyes, vomiting, altered consciousness, and sometimes, all this, you know, sometimes indicate that you're having a stroke. For mo most people, stroke gives no warning sign. I mean, for most of everyone who suffered from stroke, they, they, they didn't have any warning sign. But being aware of these five signs that I just spoke to you about can help you, um, you know, not suffer a great loss. Um, also, there's another uh, thing they call mini stroke. It's TIA, transient ischemic attack. It's a temporary interruption to the blood flow in part of your brain. And the symptoms also are like the bigger stroke. And you know, these symptoms might disappear in like 24 hours. But notwithstanding, if you're having blurry vision, you can't speak, you can't walk, do not wait till 24 hours saying, let me wait 24 hours to see if this is a mini stroke. Because multiple mini strokes at the long run could end up being a massive one and there you are, either death uh, or sudden uh, or permanent damages may occur. Um, some risk factors that can increase your risk of, of stroke are a family history of stroke, heart attack, or TIA, being age 55 or older. Nowadays, we're finding stroke to occur in younger populations, so don't think because you're, no long, you're not 55 ye uh, years old yet, you're, you're free from that. High blood pressure, you know, having a BP of 140 over 90 and higher makes you um, at, at a higher risk for, for stroke. And this, uh, having a high BP can cause the blood vessels in your, in, your brain, in your brain to bleed. So if you have high blood pressure, please, please, please consult with your doctors for, you know, proper medications. Um, having high cholesterol of 200 milligrams per deciliter can also be a risk factor for you to have stroke. So high, having high cholesterol, eating the fatty food, you know, fried food, can cause clots in your blood vessels and cause um, blockage in your blood vessels. Smoking cigarettes, well, for us um, Celestians, that shouldn't be an issue. Diabetes is a risk factor. Obesity is a risk factor. Having heart disease, you know, cardiovascular disease, heart infection, abnormal heart rhythm, these are all risk factors for stroke. Even having a previous history of stroke can also lead to subsequent stroke. Um, high level of amino acid in your blood, use of birth control pills or other hormone therapy. Again, don't be alarmed, don't, don't freak out because you are on birth control pills, but you know, to, to be at high risk for a stroke, there has to be a combination of these risk factors. 
Um, other risk factors that can increase, increase your, your, risk of, your risk of stroke include heavy or binge drinking or the use of illicit drugs such as cocaine. Again, as Celestians, this should not be found among us. Although men and women have strokes about the same rates, women are more often women more often die of strokes than do men. Blacks are more likely to have strokes than other people in other races. Um, complications that may arise from having stroke: you have paralysis of um, paralysis or loss of muscle movement. You have difficult talking or swallowing. You have memory loss or trouble understanding. Um, you have pain. Uh, people who have stroke may also become withdrawn or less social. They may lose the ability to care for others and may need a caretaker to help them with their grooming needs and their daily chores after stroke. Um, some therapies for people who have suffered stroke, um, the, the best proven one is aspirin. Uh, aspirin is the best proven immediate treatment after a stroke to reduce the likelihood or of having another stroke. In the emergency, after someone has suffered a stroke, you know, you'll most likely be given a dosage of, of aspirin. But, you know, just because that's proven to be effective doesn't mean if you're having the symptoms, quickly take an aspirin because what aspirin does is it, th it thins out your blood. Um, you know, so if you're having uh, bleeding in the brain and you also take aspirin as, you know, you think it's a precaution, that would just make the, the bleeding worse. Um, another one, um, Another treatment for stroke is uh, TPA, tissue plasmo, plasmo, plasminogen activator. <laughs> it's, a, it's a potent clot uh, bursting drug that, you know, if you have stroke that's induced by a, a clot in your brain, uh, this is, is very effective, but it has to be used within three hours window of when you are suffering the symptoms. So it's very, very important to pay attention to the symptoms I spoke about earlier. Um, in addition to aspirin and the TPA, your doctor may also recommend certain surgical procedures to open an artery that's narrowed by, by plaques. Um, after stroke recovery, I mean after stroke, the recovery um, <clears throat> not only is therapy and you know your medications, um, not only are those important, but you know your families, your friends, how well they, they support you is also important because these are all needed to help you gain back your independence and, and have a productive life again. So if, if you know someone who who've, um, suffers stroke, just be encouraging, support them in whatever ways you can, and just make sure you stay, you help them stay you know, um, active and, and um, complying with your drug therapies. Um, one thing I just wanted to add on is if you have a stroke, let's say to the, to the right side of your brain, it will affect, if you have, <laughs> Stroke to the right side of your brain, it will affect the light, left side of your body, and this will impact movement and sensation. If you have stroke to the left side of the brain, it will affect the right side, um, affecting your speech and, and um, your language. And um, the goal of stroke rehab is to pretty much help you recover as much as you can to gain your independence and functioning um, ASAP. And one thing I just want us to all keep in mind is um, this little acronym. It's it's referred to as act fast, F-A-S-T. The F part is face. If, if you're suffering stroke or you know someone who is, just simply ask them, smile. If the person smile and one face is droopy, then they, they may be suffering stroke. The A part is arms. Ask the person to raise both arms. If one hand drifts downward, then they may be suffering stroke. The S part refers to speech. Ask the person to repeat a, a simple sentence you gave them. And if they have slurry speech or they can't really compose the sentence accurately, then you know um, he or she may be having a stroke. And T, time. If the person shows any of these symptoms, time is very, very important. Call 911. Thank you. Thank you.